So today we're going to test electric motor. Um, we're going to run through some steps to testing them for your electrical maintenance and, and stuff like that. This is quite a common task that you'll come across if you're working as an engineer, as a maintenance engineer, as an electrical engineer, whatever, whatever it is you're doing. It's quite a common task in factory environments to be having to investigate faults with electric motors. One of the first tests that we can do is to check that they are, check the bearings are okay. We want to check any mechanical looseness here, any any noise, any friction, any any grumbling bearings, um, just some basic checks. Make sure it feels tight, it's not too loose, there's no noises in there, no grumbling, all feels good. So the next, get the cover off. So now we've got, um, this off. What, we, what we're going to want to do to test the motor is, as explained, you're going to want to make sure that when you're doing this, before you take this cover off, that you've checked that your circuit is dead. In order to check for dead, you want to make sure that the isolator is off, that you've applied your padlock, and whatever your local requirements are in the site and facility that you are working in to um, safely isolate, lock out, tag out a, a piece of equipment that you're working on. I'll do a video on lock out and tag out um, at a later date, but basically you don't want to be touching this if there's any chance of electrical energy going into it. So we want to isolate our circuit. Normally you have an isolator like this somewhere in the control circuit and you can lock it off. You put a padlock through there. We'd also want to be testing it for dead and to do that, you can use a multimeter, but it's not the best method of testing for dead. The best method and the approved method for testing for dead is to use a meter that puts load on the circuit. And that would be one of these uh, approved with approving unit so you can you verify that the unit works. I've gone over these in detail in a, in a previous video, but in order to test for dead correctly, you should use one of these. Uh, and this will put a load on the circuit so you'll be able to test it. Obviously this one has no cables connected to it. It is, we are confident that this is dead. So now we will start doing our tests. So what we're gonna want to do is in order to test a motor locally on a machine, you would be using a, a low ohm meter, um, mostly, most commonly called a mega. And um, it's called a mega because they, these are, the, the mega meter was made by Avo and it's, that's just, that name is stuck, but it's an insulation and continuity meter. And in order to test um, the, the motor effectively, we would be checking that our, um, our windings, all of the windings of a motor. So we've got our windings, motor windings, basically, uh, I've ruined that one straight away. Uh, right, this is effectively our motor. This is connected in, uh, this, this is delta, but it, it doesn't matter. We wanna check that each of these windings, so we've got U1, U2, V1, V2, W1, W2, U, V, W. So basically we want to test this point to that point to make sure that we have continuity and that the resistance is very similar to the resistance in the other windings. Any difference will give us an imbalance in our, in our magnetic field and will cause the motor to overheat. So if you have an overheating problems, it could be because uh, a winding is breaking down. The other thing that we're going to want to be doing is testing insulation resistance. And what we do with that is we inject 500 volts between the, the, between the windings and to earth or to our ground. And we check that the, the insulation of the windings is not breaking down. So if you've got any damp in there, it will it will highlight that. If the, if there's a damage to the to the windings, insulation test is going to pick that up. Um, and by doing both, we ensure that we have continuity and the correct resistance in our windings. And we also check that we don't have a leakage to earth that that the 
um, low ohms reading meter will not pick up. First of all, we're going to do our low ohms, our ohms reading. So we set it to the ohms reading, and then we're going to check between our windings. So we've got um, basically we're going to have to find these because um, I'm not sure what the color codes are. Is this going to tell us what the color codes are? Yeah, so if we're connected, uh, no. U1 and U2 should be, if I'm reading this correctly, we will have a little live test here. If I've read that correctly, um, U1 and U2 should be between terminals two and three. One, two, three. So two and three should be So, 43 ohms. V1 and V2 should be between four and five, 43.4 ohms. Really, we should be writing these down. I've, I've slipped into bad practice. Uh, normally, I'm doing this very quickly without thinking what I'm doing, without thinking about explaining it to somebody else. So I just get into autopilot. So let's do this properly. U, V, W, yep. W, we've just done. We'll do it backwards. 43.8 ohms. U is two and three, 43.4. And V is 43.9. So, from that, they are relatively balanced. There's not a massive amount of difference between them all, um, and we're, we've, we can be fairly happy with that. If we were starting to see a, a big discrepancy in the, in the variations there, then, then we would think that we possibly have a problem. So let's now move on to our, our other checks. So we're gonna turn now to 500 volts and we're going to inject 500 volts into the into the windings so we're going to test between the windings so we're going to basically um, check them between each other so we'll go on the same terminals we did last time and we'll press our button what you don't want to do when you're doing this is touch them terminals because you'll get a nasty shock out of that which i'm sure you'll do at some point or other if you're testing these as i have on multiple occasions but it reminds you very quickly. If we've got our windings between two and three, we should expect to zero. Yeah, if our, if our wind is continuous, which is what we've just proved with our other test. So what we also want to do is check it to, to ground, to earth, and that one should be quite high. If it's under 20 mega ohms, it needs to be investigated in the... Um, wiring regulations and, and sort of best practice guides, but um, I have seen motors in damp environments work with less than that without too many problems. Um, the dampness gets into the windings. Sometimes it will cause a problem, sometimes it won't. So um, if you're in a, in a in a factory that washes down every night, you will see a lot lower insulation resistance readings than you will in a dry environment just because of how the dampness works if you get too much dampness in it it will short and you will have a problem um, and generally you'll be able to smell that when you take the cover off so um, our first winding is fine we've got 400 400 mega ohms so let's just write this down again 400 400 mega ohms um, between <clears throat> U, U to A, yeah. And then V to E is going to be off of pin four or five. So we connect them, press the button again. 700, 800, that's interesting. So that's interesting. We've got a bit of an imbalance there. They're, they're a little bit different. W will be off number one and earth. 800, we'll call that 800. So we're just gonna go and check 
you to earth again because it might be something that I've done wrong. Yeah, so what can happen if you're not pressing, this is 850 and it's now going up, it's now infinity, so that's fine. Um, we'll go on the other side of it because it could be partially because of that. No, it was just, it, it, so if, if I'm not pressing this hard enough, we'll probably get a lower reading. Now it's not going to do it. Okay. I don't know what I did then, but that was, that was operator error. So, which is why it's good to write these down and then double check. So we've proven we don't have, we don't have a problem with this motor. We can put that back on the shelf. We can use it in an in, in a, in emergency when we need it. We can expect that it will work as we as we uh, as we want it to. Um, we've checked the bearings and and the mechanical tightness, um, and that is basically it. In order to do the to, to test a motor properly um, on a machine, you will need an insulation and continuity tester such as this one i've had this for a long while it's been dropped um a few times and it's still it's still going well the other thing like you can't test adequately you can't really test adequately with a multimeter you can do a low ohms test put on the ohms reading and you can test your your windings sorry windings between each other and then we are 45.5. So there's, you know, we've, we've got a discrepancy there between the meters, but I don't have my meters calibrated. I don't need them to be calibrated. I'm not performing any diagnostic checks that I'm gonna be writing down. They are purely for fault finding purposes. So the accuracy of them isn't, isn't that important to me. Um, having said that, I should have them calibrated. I can't then do the um, insulation resistance because I won't be injecting I won't be in injecting uh, voltage into the windings um, and, and putting it under stress and finding out where the problems are it will just give me a good reading it can give you a false positive basically it will tell you that you think that it, that it's okay when it's not they are our motor tests um, and we'll be back with loads more videos soon so please like and subscribe and you'll be updated with um, new content when we put it out. Cheers.